Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm going to go through my top five tips for creating more engaging OneNote pages. All right, let's get straight into it. My tip number one is using tables. I love tables. I use them to some extent on every page, whether it's creating content, push out to the students, or creating a worksheet with questions. The ability to insert those cells and color in and use some shading is a really cool way to push information out to the students and create a very obvious uh, question and answer place for the students to go. So I'm going to head over to my example here where we're looking at these five psychological factors. And you see by displaying that information below, by using tables to shade in the subheading and then have the information in a, in a I guess, a blank cell below, that really visually creates um, and breaks up that information. It creates a lot of structure to the page, creates a bit of color and a bit more engagement. It makes it easy for the students to be able to find that information and then being able to use a table over to the right to even create a few images in there and being able to create a few examples to back up the information. So that's why I like to use tables, like I said, Definitely make sure you use it for your worksheets as well with your questioning and answering. Tip number two, I'm going to talk about integrating video and audio. Now, I'm going to talk about audio first, but any way we can integrate either of these into your pages is going to create a little bit more engagement into your pages and students are able to click on things, watch things, or listen to something. So you can see here, I've just added an MP3. Now this is actually a song. So that when I click on that, that's obviously just gonna play within OneNote. And that's just a song. If you find any songs that are relevant to what you're learning, definitely chuck those in. And if the other great idea is integrating podcasts. So if you have anything that's relevant to what you're teaching as a podcast, if you can cut that up or just chuck the podcast straight in there and skip to what you need to listen to, you can listen to that as a class or the students can go and listen to that themselves as well. And integrating video as well is a great way to create a bit more engagement in your pages. The simplest one, the most common one, is just embedding a YouTube video. So simply go into YouTube, copy and paste in that link, and when you paste it anywhere on your page, it's gonna embed on your page like this. For example, here is an example of how Richo teaching us how to embed a PowerPoint. That will play within your OneNote. They can resize it, they can make it bigger. You can even stream if you're using Apple TV, things like that. And the other one is Microsoft Stream. So if you're using Microsoft Stream or creating your own videos or things like that, whether it's for flip lessons or you find something interesting on stream, definitely make use of the exact same process. Copy and paste that into your page and then that will display in there. So definitely make use of integrating audio and video into your pages. For tip number three, I'm gonna talk about integrating images. I've got a little subcategories on here. You can see I've got emojis, stickers, bitmojis, tags, and even giffies. Now images, really simple and easy way, obviously to add a bit of color and engagement to your pages, straight from Google Images or wherever you find your image, using that insert feature and choosing a picture, or if you've got it close by, drop in and drag that straight in from your downloads or your desktop. And a quick tip with your images, um, once you're happy with the, maybe the size or where it is, or if you want, if you have the idea where students may be going to be writing or drawing over that or around that image, right click and set as picture background. Now that's going to make it not able to be edited and I can now draw or write over or around that picture or it might just be you want that picture really set in place and you don't want it to be moved around or edited. Take advantage of that feature and if you want to undo it, same process and then I can go through and move it around and resize it. Dropping in emojis, um, I love them using emojis. You can see I've used some numbers down here and some at the top and the end of my heading. A great way to give feedback, a great way just to add a bit of engagement and color to your pages where maybe it is for headings or things like that. If you can obviously take that little bit extra time to find something relevant to the word or the thing you're talking about and drop a couple of emojis in there as well. Stickers is a really cool one. You can drop in, you can see I've created one here and being able to um, have certain stickers that are editable. So if you use your insert feature again and head over to stickers, that's gonna open up your little side panel. There's a whole array of stickers you can choose there. The best ones I find, especially for feedback and things like that, is these stickers where they are editable in action, write whatever it is that you want. They're gonna be a great way to add a bit more personalized color and engagement to your pages. Bitmojis, um, if you've created one already or have one or wanna to go to the effort of creating one, 
it's another cool way, the uh, same as insert an image to create a bit more engagement to your pages. I've got a couple here and one of Richo down there. If you are using the Chrome extension, you can just copy and paste that straight into your OneNote or if you're using the mobile app, anyway, you, you know, can copy or send those images straight from your phone to your computer is going to be a great way to add a bit more engagement to your OneNote pages. Using tags, if I head over to the home, and it's obviously one of the most simple features for OneNote, but a pretty cool one. Using it for certain types of keys or numbering or links or things like that for questions. My favorite one is the to-do list. Being able to have students um, check things off as they go or very easily select ideas or how they think or feel about something is a great way to add a little bit more engagement. Students love being able to click on things. It's really simple and really easy. For example, it could be checking on or off their learning intentions and success criteria as they feel I've achieved those. Well, here's an example where students were looking at different communication scenarios and trying to identify which ones were relevant in the case study. They can just go through and check those off. Now, another one at the bottom is a bit of a reflective thinking activity where they are looking at how they were feeling about the activity above and they can just quickly check off the box and how they feel feeling and think it's a really quick way to get a bit of feedback from the students by using that tag or the to-do list. And the last one I'm going to talk about is Giphy's. So being able to integrate Giphy's is a really cool way. It's a, it's a moving picture essentially, and it's going to create a lot more interest and engagement in your pages than just a still image. So go into the Giphy website, finding the Giphy you want, copy and paste that just like you would with a YouTube video, paste that in, and that's going to embed into your page. And again, you can move around and resize that, and it's going to look a whole lot cooler than just a still picture. So definitely make use of inserting Giphy's. For tip number four, I'm going to talk about smarter graphics in Microsoft PowerPoint. So being able to embed those is a really cool way to visually represent the key pieces of information you want for a certain topic. For example, down the bottom here, I have redisplayed my five tips for creating engagement pages with tables, audio, images, smart art, and embedding. It's a really cool way to add a bit of color and engagement to your pages. I'm going to head across to my Microsoft PowerPoint here where I have a whole array of different smart arts. So using that insert features, heading over to smart art, and the hardest part is trying to choose which one you want that's going to be relevant for the way and the type of information you want to display. Do you need images? Do you need text and a bit of information to explain that? That sort of stuff. But a bit of trial and error, once you find the one you want, either screenshot or save that image and drop that straight into your OneNote page is going to create a whole lot more color and engagement to your pages. And for my last tip for creating more engaging runner pages is embedding. So making use of any way you can embed, whether it's some of your Microsoft products, links, third party apps, that sort of stuff, is gonna obviously ideally keep the students in OneNote, which is the whole point. We don't wanna always be sending them off to other programs and apps and websites. I really wanna keep everything in the one app and it is amazing for that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways, but if you are interested in learning more about embedding, Mike Tholson, the guru, has created an ultimate guide to embedding in OneNote. Things like, obviously, I've showed you Giphy, SoundClouds, Wakelet, um, the FET, that sort of stuff, Quizlets, all that sort of stuff. There's some really cool stuff there you can embed into OneNote. So definitely have a look at Mike's video. That's going to show you a lot more. I'm just going to show you quickly some of the Office 365 stuff like integrating a PowerPoint. Rich has already done a video on this. So I'm not going to go into the how-to. Definitely check out his video if you want to do that. But being able to have a PowerPoint that one saves on space and file size and the students can then click through that PowerPoint and still have the ability to take their own notes and things like that above or below that. Integrating Microsoft Forms is obviously a really quick and simple way for the students to be able to fill out a quiz or things like that. And ideally, you're keeping them within the OneNote to make life a little bit easier. So hopefully this is going to load any second now. Yep. And then students can go through and obviously click through their options and get to the end where they then submit their response. Okay. And another one is Microsoft Word. Again, it's a very similar process to embedding like a PowerPoint. So it all comes from sharing a link from your OneDrive, but being able to embed a Word document that is then scrollable through like that. Um, a couple of options with embedding your Word. Obviously, you can highlight everything in your Word, copy it across. You can add it as attachment, things like that. But if you're constantly sending kids off away to Word, you want to try and keep them in OneNote. And the last one is a Microsoft Sway. So being able to embed, whether it's you know a Sway you've already created or someone else has created, 
embed um, that information in there that the students can go to there and find that information and sort of stay in OneNote again and, and find um, the irrelevant information they want. And again, we're saving on file storage. So definitely being able to embed is going to be a big advantage, like I said, for file storage and obviously for interactivity and engagement in your OneNote pages. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video or took something out of it, hit the like button below. If you have any feedback, questions or suggestions for upcoming videos, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section. And make sure you subscribe for all of our latest ideas, tips and tricks on everything OneNote.